Hi everyone, this is Sumit here and welcome to my channel Excel with Sumit. In this video, I'm going to explain commonly used formulas or functions in Excel. You can see that you have different type of functions called arithmetic and mathematical function, statistical functions and data ranking functions. Here you will learn different functions within different categories like sum, product, absolute, round up, round down, int, ceiling, flow within arithmetic and mathematical functions. Then you will have count, count A, count IFS, sum IFS, average, median, mode, standard deviation within statistical functions. And then you will have data ranking and distribution functions like large, small, rank, percentile. So let's go here step by step. First, we'll learn about arithmetic and mathematical functions. So let's move to the functions one by one. In the first set of functions, I'll help you explain how to do a sum function. Sum function is very commonly used function in Excel. And to get a sum, you just need to select a cell. Right here is equal to write SUM, press tab. Then here you can select list of the values which you need to add. Either you can select values one by one. For example, select this, press comma, then press this, then press comma, press this, comma, and so on. But this will take a lot of time. So rather than doing this, what you can do is just select all the cells for which you need to calculate the sum and then close the bracket and press enter. Immediately, you'll get the sum of all the price here. Similarly, if you want to get the sum of quantity, again, you write is equal to SUM, press tab, select all the cells, close the bracket. And even you don't need to close the bracket. You just need to press enter and automatically Excel will add a close round bracket and press enter. As you see here, you have got the sum of the quantity, which is 27. This completes the sum function. Now let's move to the product function. Product function basically multiplies two values like multiplication. So here, if you want to get the revenue of price into quantity, you'll write equal to write the function called product P R O D U C T press tab. Now select the cell price, press comma and select the quantity and press enter. You see here that you have got the revenue here, which is price into quantity. Now you can drag down the formula till the bottom. Here you will get the product of all the price and all the quantity. Now here, if you need to calculate sum, you will write is equal to sum, press tab, select all the cells here and press enter. Here you see that you have got the product, which is price into quantity. And then you have got the sum of all the revenue. Let's move to the next function, absolute function. Absolute function removes the negative sign from a number. So if a number is positive or negative, it will treat the number in the same way, which is the absolute value of the number. For example, here, if I want to calculate absolute value of number minus 250, it will be 250. So let's see how it works. To write absolute function, we will write is equal to ABS, press tab, we'll select the cell and we'll press enter. We see that the negative sign is removed from this number. Now, if you drag the formula towards the bottom, you see that all the negative value which are present in this column has been removed. And here you just have the positive sign of all the value. Let's move to the next function. Round, round up, round down are three functions. And these functions round the number to the nearest decimal point. And it depends till what number of digits you want to round off. So let's start with the round function. To write round function, you'll write is equal to R O U N D. Press tab. You'll select the number for which you need to round off. So let's select this number. Then you'll press comma and you'll write zero and press enter. You see that 899.99 has been round off and every digit after decimal is ignored. And now if you want to round off this number at two decimal places, you see that you have got the same number because the number have been round off to two decimal places after the decimal. Let's move back to round off the number which gives no digits after decimal. So again, we'll remove two and we'll make it zero and press enter. We see that we have got the 900. Now, if we drag down the formula till the bottom, we see that all the numbers here has been rounded off and the decimal has been removed. Now round up, round down are two other functions. To write round up function, we'll write is equal to R O U N D. We'll go towards the bottom and press tab here. Now again, select the number here. And now we want to round up towards the higher end where we want to see the number 900 here. So here you'll get the same output as we got in round. So here we'll write comma, we'll write number zero and we'll press enter. You see that you have got the same output, but the output of only this number 79 will be changed because here 79.4 will be round up to 80 number. So now here, if you drag down the formula till the bottom, you'll see that the number 79 have been converted to 80 because the number have been round up to the next digit, which is higher than this number. Let's write another function called round down. So you'll write is equal to round. You'll move the cursor down 
and press tab. We'll select the cell again here and now we'll press comma, we'll write number 0 and press enter. You see that round down function is basically removing everything after decimal and it will reduce the value to the previous number. So here the number 80 will become 79 here and again if you see 39 number 0.95 is removed and it became 39. Let's move to int function. Int is basically an integer function and it will round down the number to the nearest integer. So to get this we'll write is equal to int press tab. We'll select the number here and we'll press enter. We see that the output is similar to round down because it removes the decimal and brings back the number to the nearest integer. Now let's drag the formula towards the bottom and we see that the output is exactly same as round down. Ceiling and floor are another two functions which is used to round up the number to the nearest absolute number we want. I'll explain this step by step. Suppose we want to round the discount at the nearest 5 percentage. Basically what it means is that 10 percentage will remain 10, 5 percent will remain 5, 15 will remain 15 but 8 percent will become 10 and then 5 percent will become 5 and 12 percent will become 15 percent. So here what we want is to round the percentage number to the next multiplier of 5 percentage. So to do that we'll write is equal to ceiling, we'll move cursor down, press tab, we'll select this number and now press comma, we will write 5 percentage and we'll press enter. Now if you drag down the formula towards the bottom, we see that 8 percentage has been converted to 10 percentage and 12 percentage is converted to 15 percentage. Basically it had round up the number to the nearest 5 multiplier. Now if you want to round down the value to the lower 5 multiplier, then you will write floor function. So here we'll write is equal to floor, go down, press tab, we'll select the cell, we'll press comma, we'll write 5 percentage and we'll press enter. We'll drag down the formula towards the bottom and we'll see that 8 percentage has become 5 percentage because it has round down the formula to the lower 5 multiplier and before 8 the 5 multiplier is 5. Here 12 would have become 10 and we see that we have got the correct output. In similar way you can round up or round down the formula to the nearest x multiplier where x can be 5 percentage, 10 percentage, 15 percentage, 7 percentage or whatever number you want. This completes arithmetic and mathematical functions. Let's move to the second category of functions which is statistical functions. In statistical function I will explain count, count a, count ifs, sum ifs, average, median, mode, standard deviation. Let's start with count. Count function helps you to count the number of numeric cells. So here if I want to count how many numeric values are here, you will write is equal to C O U N T, press tab, you will select the cells here and then we will press enter. We see that we have got the 10 cells. The only difference between count and count A is that count A will give the count of non-blank cells. In count, we get the count of numeric cells. So here to get the non-blank cells, we will write is equal to C O U N T A, press tab, now here we will select the column which has item here and then we will press enter. We see that we have got 9 numbers because 1 out of 10 cells is blank here. So here we got the output 9. Now we will move to count ifs. There are two functions which are similar. One is count if and the other is count ifs. Count ifs has a capability of count if whereas count if doesn't have a capability of count ifs. So I would suggest to always use count ifs function because it can serve the purpose of one criteria and multiple criteria whereas count if can serve the purpose of only one criteria. So here in count ifs we'll try to calculate how many rows are there where the category is it and the quantity is greater than or equal to 2. So we want to find the total rows which is fulfilling this both criteria. So to get that we'll write is equal to count, we'll move the mouse downwards until we reach count ifs, then we'll press tab. Now the first criteria is the category should be it. So we'll select the cells, we'll press comma, now the criteria is it. So in double quotes we'll write it, we'll close the double quotes. Here we fulfill the first criteria. Now the second criteria is quantity is greater than or equal to 2. So to get that we'll write comma, we'll select the column for which we need the second criteria, we'll press comma and the criteria is greater than or equal to 2. So in double quotes we'll write greater than or equal to 2 and then we'll close the double quotes and then we'll press enter. We got the output 6 which shows that there are 6 products which has category as it and the quantity is greater than or equal to 2. In our day to day working life we always see that sometimes this 2 is not defined and maybe we want to link this with some cell. So how you can do that? 
suppose in the second criteria we wanted to have the quantity which is greater than the value which is present in this cell where i have written here one so how you can do that so you go to the formula here just delete the last argument here you open the double quotes press greater than and then press equal to then close the double quotes and press and symbol and then you can press this cell which has the one number and then press enter now you see that you have got the category which is it and you have got the quantity which is greater than equal to 1 now if you change the number 1 to 2 and then you will get the category which has it and you will get the quantity which is greater than equal to 2 in this way you can link count ifs with a cell which has one criteria let's move to some ifs function some ifs has additional capability in comparison to count ifs in count ifs you can count the rows for which the criteria has met whereas in some ifs we can sum the value of a column where the criteria has been met for a different column so let's get the price of all the items whose quantity is greater than equal to 2 and the category is it so to do that we'll write is equal to sum move the cursor down press tab we'll select the column price here we'll press comma so the criteria first belongs to this column so we'll select this column here we'll press comma the criteria here is that the category should be it so in double quotes we'll write it we'll close the double quotes we'll press comma now the criteria 2 belongs to this column so we'll select this column here we'll press comma now the criteria is that the quantity should be greater than equal to 2 so we'll open the double quotes we'll press greater than symbol we'll press equal to we'll press 2 we'll close the double quotes and we'll press enter we see that we have got the output which is the total price of the rows which has quantity greater than 2 and which has the category as it also remember similar to count ifs sum ifs also has two similar functions one is sum if and the other is sum ifs and again here sum ifs has the capability of sum if where sum if can only match one criteria whereas sum ifs can have one or more than one criteria here we had two criteria where you are matching quantity greater than equal to 2 and category is equal to it whereas in sum if we can have only one criteria In this way, you can use some ifs at place of some if frequently. Let's move to the another function, which is average. Average is nothing but the average of the values. So now, suppose you want to calculate what is the average price of all the items. So you'll write is equal to a v. Then we'll move the mouse downwards, press tab, and then we can select the column price, and we'll press enter. We see that we have got the average price of all the item. Let's move to median. Median is also a type of average where median gives you the middle value when you arrange the number in the ascending order. So here, if I want to write median, we'll write is equal to M E D. We'll press tab here, and then we can select the cells for which we need to calculate the median. So we'll select all the cells here. We'll press enter. We see that we have got the median 2.5, which means that when you arrange the numbers in the ascending order, the middle point will be 2.5. If there are two numbers in the middle point, for example, here there are 10 rows, so the middle point will be average of fifth and sixth. So here the fifth would be two, and the sixth will be three. So you have got the median as 2.5. Let's move to mode function. Mode function basically gives the value which is most repeated in a column. So here let's calculate the mode for quantities. To get that, we'll write is equal to M O D. We'll move the mouse towards the bottom, then we'll press tab, and we'll select the cells which has all the quantity, and then we'll press enter. We see that we have got the mode as two because two is repeated most number of times, which is three here. Two is repeated three times here. Let's move to standard deviation. To get standard deviation, we'll write is equal to S T D, and then you get multiple options of standard deviation. If you have good set of data which corresponds to population. then you can use standard deviation based on entire population whereas if you have very limited set of data then you can use standard deviation based on sample so here we have limited set of data so we'll select this and we'll press tab so let's calculate the standard deviation of the price and then we'll press enter we see that we have got the standard deviation at 272 this completes most used statistical functions in excel let's move to the third part which is data ranking and distribution functions So the first function is large. Large basically denotes to the largest number in a group of values. Either you can get the first largest number, second largest number and so on. So if you want to calculate the second largest number within this score, then you have to write is equal to LAR. You get the function here. So you'll press tab. Now we'll select all the values from this score column here. We'll press comma. As we need the second largest number, we'll write number 2 and then we'll press enter. 
when you arrange the number descending order you'll find that 96 is the largest number and 95 is the second largest number therefore you have got the second largest value as 95 here similarly we have small function so if you want to calculate the second smallest value you'll write is equal to sma then you'll press tab you'll select all the values from this score column here you'll press comma and now suppose if you want to calculate the third smallest number you'll write number three and then you'll press enter and you have got the number 78 which means that the number 76 was smallest 77 was second smallest and 78 is the third smallest where you have got the right output here let's move to rank function rank function adds a rank value based on the hierarchy of the number to get the rank function we'll write is equal to r a n k we'll move towards bottom and then press tab now here we have to select the first value so we'll click this cell we'll press comma now the reference is the entire column here so we'll select the entire column here we'll press f4 we'll press comma here either we want to rank in ascending order or descending order so let's arrange this in ascending order to get that we'll press number one and then we'll press enter we see that when we arrange the value in ascending order the rank of the score of this student is six now we'll drag the formula towards the bottom and we'll get the first lowest rank the second lowest rank the third lowest rank and so on in similar way you can get the rank in descending order by using zero in the third argument let's move to percentile formula the percentile formula basically gives the third percentile or the second percentile of all the values so now suppose if you want to calculate what is the third percentile of the score so to get that you'll write is equal to percentile we'll move towards down to select the percentile formula we'll press tab now we'll select the scores here we'll select all the column here we'll press comma now if you want to get 75 percentile number here so we'll write 75 percentage and then we'll press enter you see here that you have got a score 91.5 which is basically the 75 percentile of the entire score this completes the video where you have learned 21 most commonly used functions in excel